And now I want to invite you to uh, make your way. Hopefully you're on your way to uh, another church in our community. And while you're traveling, I'm going to read 1 Corinthians chapter 12, starting in verse 12. It says, Just as the body, though one, has many parts, but all of its many parts form one body, so it is with Christ. For we are all baptized by one Spirit, so as to form one body. Whether Jews or Gentiles, slave or free, we are all given one Spirit to drink. Even so, the body is not made up of one part, but many parts. Now, if the foot should say, because I'm not a hand, I do not belong to the body, it would not for that reason stop being a part of the body. And if the ear should say, because I'm not an eye, I do not belong to the body, it would not for that reason stop being part of the body. If the whole, eye, if the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing be? And if the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? But in fact, God has placed the parts of the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. For if they were all one part, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, but one body. What I want to note here is that the body of Christ is not limited to one part. It has many parts performing a variety of functions. Now, this body of Christ is an illustration for the church. And in the same way, the church of Jesus is not limited to one part, one congregation, one denomination, but rather all those who are baptized in the name of Jesus. We become one body, the body of Christ. The reality is that far too often we get focused on a local expression of the church as the church. But from a biblical perspective, we understand that the church is all of God's people. Different members, different parts of the body performing different functions. You know, there's a reason there are so many church, churches in our communities, and that's because many people are looking for different expressions and celebrations of faith. In fact, there's a joke I tell in our new member class that um, uh, t tell about a, a man who dies and goes to heaven and St. Peter greets him at the gate and he says, you know, hey, Peter, you know, I got to ask you a few questions. He said, when I was in uh, college, I had a friend who was, a, uh, who was a Methodist and he told me, you know, as a Presbyterian that we had some things wrong. He said, you know, we weren't going to go to heaven. He said, so show me where all the Methodists are in heaven. And Peter looks at the man and says, well, I'm sorry, but there are no Methodists in heaven. And he says, oh, wow, okay. He said, well, let me tell you this. My, my mother-in-law, she was a Catholic, and you know we had a lot of different conversations about what to believe was right, and uh, you know, we had some disagreements, but, uh, but, uh, wh where is she? Show me the Catholic section of heaven. And Peter looks at him and says, I'm sorry, but there, there are no Catholics in heaven. The man said, oh, well, I, I thought I was right. I, I, wow, I can't believe that. And then he said, you know, I worked with a coworker for a long time that was a Baptist and we really had different opinions about a lot of things. And, and we debated them back and forth. Show me, where are all the Baptists in heaven? And Peter looks at him and says, I'm sorry again, man, but I'd hate to tell you this. There are no Baptists in heaven. And with that, the man is kind of set back. He said, wow, I can't believe it. I, I mean, I thought I was right, but I can't believe it. I made it. He said, well, Peter, here I am. Where's the Presbyterian section of heaven? Where do I go? And of course, Peter looks at him and says, I'm sorry, but there's no Presbyterians in heaven. The point of that joke is that denominations are created by humanity, not God. Unity is God's objective. The concept of division over disagreement, that is not in God's plan. And ultimately, we'll all get to heaven, all those who have been baptized in the name of Jesus, all those who trust in Jesus as their Lord and Savior, and we'll be unified and we'll realize that you know, perhaps we focused on some things we shouldn't have. Perhaps we divided the body 
Perhaps at times we were guilty of being an eye saying to the ear, we don't need you. The truth is we should never think of other churches as competition. Rather, we should view them as companions, partners in ministry, partners in sharing the gospel. We seek to meet the needs of folks who are drawn to Southminster, and other congregations are meeting the needs of folks who are not. You know, if you go to a hospital, one doctor doesn't try to see all the patients. It takes a staff of physicians to meet the varying needs. In the same way, one church is not the answer for all people. Therefore, we should appreciate different expressions of the hope that we have in Jesus that are bringing healing to other people. Now, it's a hard time to be a church. Like many of the other Places we visited and prayed over in this time. There's some challenges figuring out what to do. What is the right approach and what is safe? Some churches have decided to go back fully on campus, indoors. Others, many others, are still meeting only digitally and remotely. Determining what is right and safe for your congregation is a multifaceted and challenging decision. And the answer is likely different depending on your facility, your congregation, your property, and the convictions of your leadership. So on our next stop, we're going to go and we're going to pray. We're going to pray for our brothers and sisters in Christ. We're going to pray for the church of Jesus in this time. That the churches we pray over will be unified. That their leaders will have clarity and make wise decisions, and that God will be glorified in our congregations. Let's go and pray for our brothers and sisters in Christ.